could a 13.7% weight loss in diabetic patients sound disappointing? Today, we're diving into the Redefine 2 trial, a study that made headlines not for what it achieved, but for what it didn't. By the end of this video, you'll understand why this negative result might actually represent a clinical breakthrough hiding in plain sight. Let's start with the clinical reality. Over 90% of patients with type 2 diabetes are overweight or obese, making this one of the most challenging patient populations for weight management. Current weight loss medications show modest efficacy in diabetics, creating a desperate need for enhanced therapeutic options. Here's what makes this combination interesting. Cagrisema merges two complementary mechanisms. Semaglutide, our familiar GLP-1 agonist, acts primarily through the hypothalamus to reduce appetite. Cagrolintide, a long-acting amylin analog, targets multiple amylin receptors, providing a distinct but synergistic approach to appetite regulation. The hypothesis was simple. Two pathways working together should deliver superior weight loss compared to either agent alone. The central question driving Redefine 2 was straightforward. Does the cagrolintide semaglutide combination provide superior weight loss compared to placebo in overweight diabetics? But here's the critical context. This wasn't just about proving superiority over placebo. Novo Nordisk was positioning Ching Cagrisima as a potential game changer with initial expectations of achieving 25% weight loss. Keep that number in mind as we examine what actually happened. The Redefine 2 trial was methodologically robust, a multi-center, double-blind, placebo-controlled RCT spanning 12 countries with 1,206 participants. The inclusion criteria targeted adults with BMI more than 27, HbA1c between 7 to 10 percent, and established type 2 diabetes for at least 180 days. The 68-week duration included a 16-week dose escalation phase, followed by 52 weeks of maintenance therapy. Critically, this trial used a 3 to 1 randomization ratio. 904 patients received Cagrisima, while only 302 received placebo. This unequal randomization, while statistically valid, becomes important when we discuss the study's limitations. The study population was representative of real-world diabetic patients seeking weight management. Average participants were 56 years old, 47% female, with a mean weight of 102 kilograms and BMI of 36. The racial distribution was 66% white and 28% Asian, with only 3% black participants, a demographic limitation we'll return to. Importantly, the baseline HbA1c was 8.0%, indicating suboptimal glycemic control despite most patients being on metformin and other glucose-lowering medications. This population represents exactly the patients clinicians struggle with daily, those needing both weight loss and better diabetes control. Primary outcomes measured were the percentage change in body weight, the proportion of patients with more than 5% and 20% weight loss from baseline, reductions in waist circumference, HbA1c, and systolic blood pressure, as well as adverse events and deaths. Now for the results that sparked international debate. Cagrisema achieved a 13.7% weight reduction compared to 3.4% with placebo, a statistically significant difference of 10.4 percentage points. For the proportion achieving meaningful weight loss, 83.6% of Cagrisema patients lost at least 5% of body weight versus 30.8% with placebo. But here's where context matters. Nearly 23% of Cagrisema patients achieved more than 20% weight loss compared to just 0.5% with placebo. These are numbers approaching bariatric surgery efficacy. Yet the market reaction was disappointment. Why? Because expectations had been set at 25% weight loss, and only 61.9% of patients maintained the maximum dose by study end. Beyond weight loss, the glycemic results were remarkable. HbA1c dropped by 1.8% in the Cagrisema group versus 0.4% with placebo. More impressively, 73.5% achieved the diabetes target of HbA1c 6.5%, compared to just 15.9% with placebo. Here's where the clinical rubber meets the road. Cagrisema's Achilles heel was tolerability. Gastrointestinal adverse events occurred in 72.5% of patients versus 34.4% with placebo. More concerning, 8.4% discontinued due to adverse events compared to 3.0% with placebo. The discontinuation data reveals the real-world challenge. Only 61.9% maintained the target dose. 
suggesting that while the drug works, keeping patients on effective doses remains problematic. This pattern mirrors what we've seen with other GLP-1 medications, but appears amplified with the combination therapy. Let's give credit where it's due. This was methodologically excellent research. Large sample size with 99% statistical power, appropriate blinding and randomization, and hierarchical statistical testing to control for multiple comparisons. The inclusion of continuous glucose monitoring provided unprecedented insight into real-time glycemic control. The 68-week duration captured both short-term efficacy and longer-term tolerability patterns. Most importantly, the results were clinically meaningful. This wasn't statistical significance without clinical relevance. However, several limitations demand attention. First, the absence of active comparators means we can't determine if the combination truly offers additive benefits over individual components. This is a fundamental design flaw that leaves the core value proposition unproven. Second, the population was demographically limited, predominantly white and Asian with minimal black representation. Given known racial differences in drug metabolism and diabetes prevalence, generalizability is questionable. Most critically, the high rate of dose reductions and discontinuations raises questions about real-world applicability. If two-thirds of patients can't tolerate the target dose, what's the practical clinical utility? So what does this mean for clinical practice? Cagrisima represents a new therapeutic option achieving superior weight loss compared to existing medications in diabetic patients. The dual benefits of weight reduction and glycemic control could reduce medication burden and diabetes complications. However, implementation faces significant hurdles. Cost effectiveness remains unproven, patient selection for tolerability will be crucial, and long-term safety data are still needed. The high discontinuation rate suggests this won't be a first-line therapy for most patients. The real question isn't whether Cagrisima works. It clearly does. The question is whether the benefits justify the risks and costs in routine clinical practice. Recent research and expert commentary provide important context to these findings. Meta-analyses comparing Cagrisima to semaglutide alone confirm superior weight loss, but highlight significantly higher gastrointestinal adverse events and vomiting rates. Real-world adherence studies with GLP-1 medications show concerning patterns. One large analysis found only 32% of patients remained on therapy at one year, with discontinuation rates approaching 68%. Leading obesity researchers have noted that while a 13.7% weight loss represents best-in-class efficacy, the tolerability profile may limit broad clinical adoption. The flexible dosing protocol used in Redefine 2, while reducing discontinuations, also meant that the majority of patients never reached the target therapeutic dose, raising questions about optimal real-world dosing strategies. Perhaps most tellingly, this represents the second Cagrisima trial to fall short of Novo Nordisk's original 25% weight loss expectations, leading to significant investor disappointment and a nearly 50% decline in the company's stock value from 2024 peaks. The take-home message? Cagrisima achieved unprecedented 13.7% weight loss in diabetic patients with excellent glycemic control, but tolerability remains a significant clinical concern. This isn't failure. It's real-world medicine, where perfect efficacy meets human physiology. Two questions for discussion. First, how would you counsel patients about the risk-benefit profile given these high GI side effect rates? And second, should combination therapy like Cagrisema replace individual GLP-1 agonists as first-line therapy for obese diabetic patients? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more evidence-based medicine breakdowns. See you in the next video.